How you doing, man? I'm great, man. It's a good mic. You don't have to be that close. Oh. Oh. Thanks. Thanks. That one in <laughs> are we? <clears throat> oh, there you are. Okay. Hey, it's Friday. Uh, welcome to In Question. It's Friday, five, uh, 3.30 here on the West Coast, and we have some amazing guests here today. Uh, as we have our, our normal, uh, usual suspects on the right, I'm going to kind of outline that we have Ken Thompson, Sports X Radio, uh, a very uh, living legend in Vegas in the sports handicap, sports picking, anything you want to know about sports, we use him as our 411. And then we also have Tank Jones, a Hollywood actor, producer, director, uh, starred in over at least two dozen movies, I believe, two dozen, and, and some television shows, throw them all in there, you, you've done so much, and uh, I even know this, that uh, I, I probably shouldn't even say this yet, but you started at like two years old, right? In a commercial. At two years old, Aww. yes. Two years Sesame old. Sesame Street. So if you can. Oh, that's awesome. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, that was it, though. So it was two years, and then after that, it was another 15 years before wow. I come back to it. Yeah. So when it's meant 15. to be, it's meant to be. Now, wait, wait. Wasn't it two years old you were Sesame Street? Two, two years old, Sesame Street commercial. Say, I, actually, my um, my mom was walking uh, in a mall. This actually happened. She was walking in a mall in Chicago. Okay. And an uh, agent came up to her from Getty's agency back in the day. So okay. saw me, thought I was just a cute Gerber-looking type Aww. baby. And say, he wanted to represent me. And from that representation, I got a Sesame Street commercial out of it. And... So you say, okay, why was it just a Sesame Street commercial? Because my mom was only 17 years old. She had a very, she had a severe bout of scoliosis. Okay. So she was in a body cast for a year. We lived 50 miles south of Chicago. Wow. So nobody wanted to take a two-year-old kid back and forth to auditions 50 miles. It's a hundred miles round trip. So that was the beginning and the end of my Hollywood story. Until I became and a teenager. now he's back. Now. Living off royalties for 15 years. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So the Cookie Monster does cool pay. Story. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So you, you've been doing a lot more since then, right? You you were on uh, uh, NCIS. You were on, why don't you list some of these things that you've done? Oh, we're I mean, talking now. We're, I mean, we're oh, actually... Yeah. Like, oh, dang, that just kind of threw me into the fire. Like, okay. Well, we got to start someplace. Yeah, right? we got an hour. Uh, true. Um, and you're yeah, half I, of it, Ken's the other half, and then we squeeze in our questions in the middle. Oh, you got stuff to say? Uh, sometimes. And you actually want to ask me stuff? I do. <laughs> Damn. All right. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I actor, producer, uh, motivational speaker, dad. As you know, my son's outside. We actually did a film together. I'll talk about that, oh, I too. I love it. Um, but, can yeah. I, can I just ask one question before yes. we get going? It's, it's, because most of the guys I know that are nicknamed Tank are freaking huge. <laughs> How did you get the nickname Tank? Good, uh, good I thought question. it'd be Gerber. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's in there, too. No, that's a good question. So when I, I've been known uh, as Tank since I was one. Um, Big-headed kid. So when I'd get up and I started walking and then running, my grandmother had this really big deep freezer that I like to run into 
fall down, laugh about it, get up, and do it again. It'd be a TikTok sensation yeah. right now. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do it again, Jake. Yeah, and I and I would. So I'd ran in the deep freezer, ran into a wall. Had no effect on me, of course not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Of course, Just the bears, the bears yeah. at the fridge, but we had the tank. We had the tank. The freezer. Yeah, yeah. But it was actually <laughs> tank head. They called me little tank head when I was a kid, and as I got older and grew into my head, just became, became tank. tank. Okay. okay. So that's yeah. the, it was that's all worth the laughs and, yeah. the, and the and the praise, yeah, absolutely, right? <laughs> right? Absolutely. It's saying it stuck with me. And saying that some of my friends didn't know that was my nickname. So as I'm getting older and they're seeing these credits, like, who the heck is Tank? And say, yeah, that's that's me. And it's also a legal name, too. So. That's right. Really? So there's that. Very yes. Cool, yeah. A legal name. Legal name. Oh, very nice. Yeah, man. There you go. Well, that's we impressive. Had to, it had is. To, had to pay yeah. taxes on it and everything. <laughs> so you actually switched it. So my, my still, my legal, my name is Larry Tank Jones. Oh, it is. Oh, oh okay. so it's your middle name. Yeah. Oh, that's that. impressive. That is. You go by Tank. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Very cool. Because, you know, it's usually like some gigantic guy, and they call him Tiny, right? Everybody everybody has a story, yeah. right? Yeah. Even me growing up, I always wanted to be on television uh, so that, you know, I became known as Hollywood, right? That was right. like my nickname. Oh, here comes Hollywood, you know, uh, Hollywood, Hollywood, because that's all I did was make <laughs> videos and stuff, and I had a camera in my hand. I was always trying to uh, do it, and uh, then we started playing hockey, and uh, I, I, I just filmed myself. See that's yeah. funny. My my wife, who is as far from Hollywood as you can get, that's her nickname. Really, Hollywood. Oh wow! Because <laughs> when we used to there, I, one of my first business mentors, his name is Jamie Hep. If you're listening or you're watching, Jamie, shout out. Um, but he used to call her Hollywood all the time because of her glasses and the way she did her makeup and her hair. Right. He just, he said, "Here comes Hollywood," and it just kind of stuck. See, I got so the hair thing going with her. Yes, yeah, she like do. My hair does like, not move. Man, you are I just take it out me. and put it on the mannequin <laughs> and get back, back up. I put it back on. <laughs> yes, I like it. That's it. I'd say from here up, the little Val Kilmer stuff. A little the, bit, yeah. The eyes, the oh, eyes yeah. for sure. They say when I put it here, I'm going to use your glasses. They now. Tell, no, no, watch. Jim McMahon. Oh yeah. Yes. You can yeah, see, I can oh, yeah, sure. I'll do it on the camera, you know. Well, I, well, maybe now, because, you know, he's a little heavier, I'm a little heavier. No, but back in the call. day, I used to spike the hair. <laughs> Thanks for the nice. use of the goggles. You got it. But, can you uh, throw? I'll be the huh? carrot can top prop guy. Can I throw? Can you throw? Oh, yeah, I could definitely throw. All I right. played... Uh, I played hockey. That was my primary, but uh, you know, like all kids, you know, you played football and you tried baseball, and you know, you just kept going. Right. But you you, you end up picking one. And I look at you know this guy, nineteen years in the big leagues. Uh, I don't know how he did it. Uh, obviously, it's just fun <laughs> and what, pain. What happened? I, He's I, gonna say I don't even remember. Yeah, I, don't remember. <laughs> you just I, I, I blacked out. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you said it's over. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? That's it. Here I am talking about it now. How, how drunk were you? <clears throat> uh. Oh, Am I? Two, no, no oh, not right now. No. Not right now. <laughs> no, no, that comes after the show. Yeah. Nice. But, uh, okay, Ken, let's go to you. you got sports betting going on all over. I'm going to keep bouncing around. I love doing it because like it gives it. everybody a shot to get in. But, Ken, you you got the sports show. This guy, i got to tell you, is, like, number one on sports. He always calls me, and he's like, I was 77 for the weekend. 77%. You know, he was just going crazy. And every weekend he goes, why, why don't you watch sports? I go, you know, because I go, you know, I'm like making a movie or I'm texting or typing or something. And I'm like, because I don't watch sports. And he's always calling. He's like, I did 78, 79. I got the best handicappers in Vegas. People should be listening to me. And they are. And I'm in 40 states. But he goes, they should be making money. And I should be getting royalties from everybody because I am picking them. He's always on fire. So, Ken, take it away. I mean, I can't give you enough plugs because of the amount of wins that you pull. This guy lives it. I mean, every time he pucks up, pick up the phone, I go, hey, Ken, what are you doing? He goes, I'm doing a bet. And, uh, you know, they're up 14%. And I'm like... All I wanted to do is know what time I should be at your house. Well, I game. want all the guys that I play fantasy football with uh, that are watching this uh, hey, to y'all better be call very, them. very afraid. Right here. Uh, yeah. right. Ken could yeah, go through that in eight seconds. Yeah. No, I gave Cameron. That's uh, from the West game, my buddy Jay Cornegay, and they have the line on every single NFL game for the entire season right there, the spread on every single game. Jeez. So I gave Cam a copy of that. Uh, I love but yeah, it. there's. <laughs> I, I, well, now you're you, now you're announcing it, so they're never going to let you join. Did you already get your money in? Oh, we're we're you know a few years running. With oh, this okay, okay. So they're yeah, that's, that's a like, pride yeah. thing. They're, now, I, what I would do is just keep it to yourself. You have now a new relationship for each week, and when you're you know maybe. No, heck, I, I, I got a yeah, relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take Nancy on the broker fee here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> so go ahead, Ken. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're you're, you're good. I mean, I uh, I transitioned from Jersey out to the West Coast, and I love the West Coast. I mean, I'm glad I was raised on the East Coast. I think uh, I got a lot of uh, that East Coast aggressive smarts. The yeah. street smarts. There's a fine line, as my dad would say, between confident and cockiness. He goes, "You don't want to be cocky. You want to be confident." So I said, "All right." And I remember my dad when I was 15, and he said, "Son." You cannot be afraid to take chances in your life. If you do, you'll never get anywhere. When I was 16, my dad's like, son, you've taken too many freaking chances already. Will you slow down? <laughs> 17, I joined the Navy, and that's how I got to the West Coast. So I uh, ended up being a sportscaster on an aircraft carrier, which is bizarre. But 5,500 guys, and this is back in the day. It's probably so the safest was, room in the place. Well, there's no, there's no uh, computers or anything. Nobody's got the cell phone finding the scores. It's, it's a teletype, one of those typewriters that's typing out all the information continuously. So there I am in the Indian Ocean on a carrier, 17 hour time difference, not realizing I've got Sunday's football scores on Saturday. I already wow. know the scores. I could have been the richest guy. I wouldn't even be sitting here, but I was only 18. I was going to bought stupid. the carrier. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that, you know, I, I've always been involved in all, all different sports and sports betting. And people used to kind of poo poo it like, oh, you're in sports gambling. Oh, God. Now you see it along with marijuana, sports gambling. That's how every state is going to recover from COVID decimating yes. their budgets and, and their economy. And so you're seeing it's happened in Arizona here. It's going to be ready to roll in the fall. You're going to be able to bet from your phones like you do in Vegas and yeah. Jersey. And, uh, you know, the difference there as opposed to growing up with the bookie system like I did in New Jersey is – there's no credits there with the casino. They don't trust you, Jerry. They're not going to say, hey, Jerry, that's cool. You can bet $5,000, but, you know, you got to have that 5000 in the account when you bet it. The bookies, they'll collect from you. Yeah, if you don't pay, the old pay, to, yeah. if you don't pay they need to. they'll get their money. <laughs> when when I see right? Ken coming up with a limp. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Exactly. 78% and the one I chose yeah. with the big money is the 1%. No, you know, and and that's, a, that's the thing. People realize uh, I, I'm a good friend with Bill Krakenberger. Uh, Bill and, that is uh, Krak that is Krakenberger with a K, and he's big time. He's a professional gambler from Jersey, started with a $1,000 bankroll. He's a multimillionaire. You'll see him on all these different shows. Showtime did a big special on Crackman. Uh, but he'll talk okay. about Crack listening man. to all, the, <laughs> all these different, all these yeah. different people talk about. I'm eighty percent. I'm seventy five percent of my. No, Crackman says, look, if you're seventy percent, he goes better yet. If you're sixty percent, I will give you a hundred thousand dollars. If you're sixty percent. The, you're just telling me you're 75, 80%. We need to get back on that aircraft okay. carrier. No, this is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, for I'll 100 grand? You, I'll give you 100 grand. He goes, and if you don't hit 55%, you give me 10,000. So I'm giving you 5,000. He's never had one taker. Because all these people that tell you how great they are, to win 70 of 100 games, yeah. sure, you can do it for a couple weeks. You can do it in a season. I had a college basketball season a couple years ago. I was 95 and 55, which is pretty awesome. Make good money. Uh, I sell my plays. I've been doing that for a long time, so I have a lot of people that know my track record. Oops, There's sorry. only three sports that I handicap, NFL, college football, and uh, college basketball. Those are the three best as far as NBA is a crapshoot, hockey, uh, Major League Baseball. So you're good at time. hockey? I love hockey. Now who's playing tonight? The Vegas Golden Knights game seven against Minnesota at home at T-Mobile, and they've dropped the last two. Are so. you into sports? I am into sports, but I've never been into sports gambling. But listening to him talk about sports gambling, I might get into sports gambling. <laughs> yeah. I, I see 15 <laughs> minutes <laughs> after this show. Yeah. I'm going to need those picks yeah. right yeah. now. Uh, you know. Remember, we're going to be texting back and forth all night. There you go. It, it sounds it, like a win. Wife, ho wife Hollywood might be a little happy when you go, here's two grand. Just, I'm just saying. Because oh, that, that's, that's all I do. When I get money, I just hand it over. Hand I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you guys are good. But you've seen all these <laughs> different things take off and Jerry you're very much into the cryptocurrency you know oh, yeah. that inside out you saw how that took off sports gaming is what Good. is going to be one of the hugest things over the next It's going to be years. crypto and sports betting and then they're going to merge the two. Well, and marijuana. You see right? you seen the cannabis well, as well. Well, you need yeah. marijuana cuz yeah. somebody's got to go, man, <laughs> how the hell do we put this together? <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Put the glasses on, yeah. man. Let me see that again. <laughs> of course, I don't get high. I I don't smoke marijuana. I don't uh I haven't done it's any. It's legal here in Arizona. I have not it's done okay. any within the hour. All right. um, just kidding. <laughs> right. Just kidding. Right. I'm kidding. No, so. uh, but I, I'll tell you what. It is. Uh, it is. Uh, it's just something I've always done. And I remember my dad in sports, and my dad says, "Son," he says, "You're going to be working your ass off the rest of your life. Find something you enjoy." And finally got into uh, sports. I have my own talk so show. So cow now tipping for, is out. 
Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I was in I was in Midwest like you, so yeah, I know. Uh, you know that was that was just but Saturday there are Jersey night. cows. They do have that nickname, Jersey cows. But yeah, yeah but those are, are just very are the big garden women. State, you know the, the <laughs> oh, Jersey oh Shore. Jersey Shore. You know, they're just, Got a lot of great Jersey Shore stories back in the day, but those are for another day. But actually, all the '80s stories are probably the best stories yes. because the the police, everybody, you know, it's just more of a party scene, right? Remember, there was correct. a lot. Yeah, it was. It was a <laughs> lot more just high energy, and then you went into the '90s, and everybody was into the dancing. You know, mm -hmm. you remember that we went to clubs, yeah. people were dancing. Now they don't really dance. I go to the bar, they're just drunk. <laughs> right? I mean, you go down to Old Town here at, on a Friday night, and it's like 21 years old. Everybody's hammered. You know, it, it's it's pretty crazy. That's why I stay up here, up north, and go to Cave Creek. But uh, the, the, you, where do you go in this town? I don't. You you just stay at home. Homebody, no. right? <laughs> I'm not actually. No, I'm not a homebody. I travel okay. a lot. Okay. Um, but so I, you're in the movie sets. I'm, I'm not a club guy though. Yeah, me neither. And so I, mean, either. I don't want to be well, push or bump. Yeah, I'm not a club yeah. I like restaurants though. <laughs> I definitely like restaurants. So oh, I yeah. used to do this uh, show, um, and it was the uh, Cheat Meal Diaries. And we would go around to various restaurants around the Southwest, uh, picking their best dishes. And so you're like Guy Fieri fun. type say, of thing? Nice. Say, yes, but only specifically about desserts. We would try. Oh, one, I need that job. We would do one of their, <laughs> oh um, one of their great plates that they Yum. would do. We would critique the food while we were there. And then I'm a, I'm a brownie uh, Sunday connoisseur, so I love oh. food. Yum. So I would go to different restaurants and I would try their brownie and I would rate that brownie on the show. And how the hell do you keep that body right. looking that good? How are you not? Like, wow. hey, like I'm eating a brownie <laughs> once a week and I'm this big. That's <laughs> why we call it a cheat meal. Oh, okay. Not a cheat week. <laughs> just, just a cheat Dang. meal. So yeah, you, I get the, I get the meal and then I got to spend the rest of the week working So, it you know, the, there's, a, there's a crypto now that's coming out. It, it, it's FTNs, the, the fundables or, uh, do you know this? Anything that's old, any of your old shows are worth like huge amounts of money in crypto. Did you know that? I did not so know So if you that. take your shows and you put them on there, uh, I actually uh, heard about it from some people and then Waka, uh, Waka Flock of Flame right. was here and he was saying, because he said, how many shows have you done? I said, well, I started in like 2000 doing uh, like kind of like what we were talking about pre-show, which was I did interviews with bands and, and artists and I right. have John Legends, like one of his first interviews. Right. Like he was, he was like, uh, what's your name? You know, he was so nervous and now he's like a huge star, right? right? And they're like, do you know how much this is worth to have John Legend's <laughs> first interview? Wow. Right. And I go, nobody knew who he was. Why is it, you know, it's now, I would think now is the big time. And he's like, oh my God. So I picked up all these bags and I'm like, here's nine <laughs> years of tapes. And he goes, what are those? Right. You know, and I'm like, tapes. Tapes. Yeah. You know, and he's like, what's how, tape? How, how can right. I get those on the internet? And I'm like, when I download them and turn them into... You know, so now he's like, you got to remaster all these. Right. So now that's what I'm doing wow. at night is I'm hitting, you know, I'm going over to the computer, remastering them all. And then I look and I go, I was thin. <laughs> I, was. I mean, I look good on television. You know, nice. now I'm uh, just, you know, a plus size. Hair uh, still hasn't oh moved. Oh, no, no. But that hair doesn't move. The color's changed a little, but the... Thank you, yeah, Nancy, yeah. for bringing that up. I uh, appreciate that. <laughs> you know, so. I, 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 it's funny you said that, but Look at you're blonde. You can't just blends in. What's going in. on with that? You know, that's I, why you don't grow a goat, because you have like the... You, you I, got. Do you have the gray, I did, like, milk, I had, I, had the goat, I had the goatee, and I had the Fu Manchu for, in fact, my daughter, Kiara, knows me for the first 13 years, always facial hair. My wife, Christina, who you know, uh, here in Phoenix, we met on eHarmony, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Really? About nine years ago and got married five years ago. You were there at the wedding. I got to see, did you did you really put up your picture? Because there's a oh, lot yeah. of that fake, you know, like, put no. his picture up, and she's like, oh, I'm going to meet him tonight. <laughs> and there you are. And they're I like, was, well, you'll do. Well, I was there. No, I, I was there. I was did there. she get catfished? No. Okay. Right. Right. What's catfish? I promise. You don't know what catfish is? Sorry, I'm well, out of the pose as somebody exactly. else. Exactly. Okay, that's exactly what you're right. talking about. Okay, no, I just learned something. Here's, here's I told you about FTNs. Here's right. the best. Right. Uh, I didn't know about her that. Her two you're oldest right. daughters, yeah. they would, and Christina was a widow, and she's, you know, she got on the eHarmony because she wanted somebody that had foundation and faith, and, and that's what I was looking for a little bit. And uh, I said, God, please forgive me. I, I'm not attracted to any of these women. And I, I you know, and I didn't. I didn't think I was better than anybody, but I just wasn't. So I got off it, went on match for a while. And sure, if you want to get laid, you can uh, go on match. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're, you're there. Hey, it, it works. Well, it's, it's, I'm it's just being honest. It's it's just how you use it. Yeah, sound right coming. So, so then, they had, then I get this email from eHarmony, and they were having a like a free 72-hour period. So I said, yeah. all right, well, since I've already done the four hours worth of work to 
uh, get the algorithms profile, and yeah. all that crap. I said, all right, I'll go on there. So the first time, because I had moved from L.A. to uh, Vegas, they said radius, and I put 150 miles. I said, ah, I don't want to go to L.A., but if there's somebody from Victorville coming in or something, I go, I'll give it a, ch- <laughs> a, a shot. So nothing. So this time I said, all right, God, if it's up to you, I'm not putting a radius at all. So I left it blank. That opened Phoenix up, which was 280 miles away. So wow. Christy would not even really go on many dates at all off the eHarmony. And her two oldest daughters were senior and junior in high school. And they would look at the pictures that, that would come in. Mm-hmm. And so Kaylin, the oldest one, goes, oh, mom, look at this guy. He looks like a nice guy. Lauren, down a year, goes, I don't think so, ma. Vegas, tattoos. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah. so, all of a sudden, so now, since we've been married five years, I was just like, look, Lauren, if it wasn't for Kaylin, I wouldn't even be here. So just stay out of this, right? So have a little That's bit a of fun. Nice. Story. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, things have changed so much. Mm-hmm. And we talk about sports gaming and cannabis and all this stuff that was taboo as we're growing up has changed now. And realistically, we used to have to hide. Now we don't have to hide. Yeah, People right? are smoking right out front. Yeah. They're like, look at the cop. He <laughs> looks pissed. He doesn't have any. He yeah. looks like he's out. You know? Exactly. <laughs> so, no, but, but it is. It's, it's crazy how things have changed because, you know, you kind of go through stuff and you realize it's what's detrimental, what's not. And, uh, and I, th- I see society continuing to change, hopefully for... Uh, I think a lot of it's better. changed after COVID. People have oh, reevaluated yes. their entire life That's right time. now because during that time, I mean, I was calling him and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, you want to sneak over? <laughs> You know, and he's like, yeah. are there any cops out? I'm going to take all back roads. You know, he's like, uh, I got a little uh, dirt bike. I'm going to try that. I'm going to go over the mountain, come down on the other side and meet you there. You know, well, all this progression is great. You know, <clears throat> it's obviously good yeah. for us to evolve and move forward. And um, but there's always a balance. Right. And I yeah. think we're seeing that balance really go the wrong way in, in a couple of certain states like Portland, Oregon yeah. seems to be yeah. uh, their numbers aren't going Did quite the right way. So rate so up 800 percent. Eight hundred percent. That's insane. That was like tree huggers up there. You know, they were yeah. really tree huggers. Everything yeah. was environmental, and now they're just shooting everybody. So uh, certain areas have kind of taken it to the extreme. I think this is this is the revolution. You know, every few years we've had it. We've had it like you know the uh, civil rights and the '69. We had it then. Then it kind of comes. You know, with each semi generation, it seems to like come out something. This one, it's like the young kids, like we know everything, we know the tech. You guys can't even figure out your phone. You have to hand it to us, and that's totally true. Because I have a son who's like a computer genius, and I have to go just fix this, man. He's like, oh, Mister, I have seventy four satellites. Can't figure this out, you know. And I'm like, uh, like a Rubik's cube, they're finishing it. Like, give him mac and cheese, you know, no stick for that kid. <laughs> but then he fixes it. And I'm like, all right, give him a stick, right. you know. But. Yeah, I mean, he, he's got his beautiful son that came today. Yes. yes. Uh, so. Amazing kid. Thank you. So Definitely, man. Handsome. You got, like, good genes and stuff because, like, everybody in your family is, like, good looking. I said, well, thank you. I said, you're, are you said you, it you? has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with mom. Are, <clears> so you, are you his agent or his mom? Uh, that actually, it's going to be an actor. Yeah, uh, for so sure. So, speaking on the acting, uh, we just had a film. It's called Cold Cartel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I didn't want him to act. You, you talk about him being an, act, being an actor. I have three kids, and my girls are now 15 and 17. Oh, you're in trouble. Okay. <laughs> but, so, side note on that, say my, my 17-year-old has four streams of income, uh, and my wow. 15-year-old is opening up a snow cone business at Chandler Mall next Friday. Oh, cool. Did, you, so, did nice. you get the new one? Yeah. Because um, we were talking yesterday. But did yeah. you bring coupons for us? Come on. So, well, I, I'm telling you about <laughs> the grand Jesus. opener. Right, if I see you, you I got you. So make sure you come. It's <laughs> right. next Friday. So I did something right with them. There you go. But when they were younger, both of them did a national commercial with me and did a lot of photo shoots with me. And we have these conversations and it kind of feels, just being honest, that maybe I forced it for, for them to do it. It wasn't necessarily something that they wanted. So with him, I said, okay, I'm not going to force anything. I'm not even going to talk to him about it. I'm actually going to steer him away from it. So he is six years old, and he's nine now. He's six. He's like, Dad, he comes up to me and say, Dad, I want to be on TV. And I said, no, you don't. And he said, no, Dad, I really want to be on TV. I said, where is this coming from? I said, because we don't even have the discussion. And he starts getting all shy on me. We go back and forth. I said, really, where is this coming from? Why do you want to be on TV? He said, I want to be on TV and make movies like you. Like, oh, God dang it. So I (laughs) couldn't, it's like I had, like, okay, he said it. I didn't say it. I've been trying to keep him from it. So we did a film um, two years ago called Coke Cartel. Uh, And it's about um, 
polygamy. Uh, okay. The polygamous town that was up in Colorado City, Arizona, based on a true story. And he came up there. We just, The premiere was in Florida on May 23rd. I'm already getting phone calls from the people that were there and the lady who made the film. She said, your son got the biggest laughs and the biggest raves oh, yeah. in the film. Awesome. And the, the director was saying, I got to take a picture with this kid because I will at some point be That's known right. as his first director. Because he, right. he knew all of his lines he knew all of my lines, and he knew all the lines of the guy who he had scenes with. At, wow! At six, that's, so that's pretty amazing. So yeah. I was I was pretty that's stoked. Impressive. So I was like, yeah, I'm 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 impressed with the kid. I was, that's I was, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Dilly yeah. calls you and says, one day he goes, Dad, I got an agent. Uh, you're you're fired. <laughs> yeah, right. and, and, and it'll happen at that Thanks point. Thanks for I'm, getting I'm me like, Yes, I'll we'll write it in the contract. Well, when you make sure I get my residuals. Yeah. When you see it's your wife, you'll be okay with it. I'll be okay with it. They should be sharing. There you go. That's amazing. That's, like, that's cool. a that, that's a good entrepreneur family right there. Yes, so we're trying, is. man. So I um, mean, yeah, I just recently started getting into crypto because I've been trading in the foreign exchange market since 2007. So, okay. Um, people start forex. To me. Yeah, for I, I love the forex. Yeah, so I, have, I did a lot of forex. Say so it took me a while to get my bearings on how so I could finally start moving the needle in the right direction. But I'm. But it kind of took fan. a dump during uh, COVID, so. It, yeah, but actually stayed afloat and did pretty well. Oh yeah, um, during that time, it's just I. But I, not every dollar, but the U.S. Were you? <laughs> I, did, I did the U.S. I did New Zealand. I did Australian. I did. Uh, I trade actually seventeen different pairs. It says oh, okay. all about the charts. I'm a technical. Yeah, trader, yeah. So, um, but you're yes, doing the uh, the 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 short, so you buy up and then. I'll do those if uh, if the market presents it. Because we had somebody on one of the shows that actually makes the algorithm for that, and he he is so good that I'd he, love to I, I've to introduced that him to everybody. Um, everybody that's put the money in with him has made thirty percent a quarter, like hands down for multiple years. And uh, say, yeah, I, I get a lot of uh, <laughs> I get a big bottle of Jack Daniels from each one of these guys because they're like, dude, here's a bottle for you. I know this, and I'm thinking. That bottle's thirty two hundred and thirty two bucks. I just helped you make five million and I got a big bottle of jack. <laughs> so I'm, that's thinking, it? I'm thinking like a five thousand dollar check and I'll buy my own jack. You know, well, but uh we'll I've make that him. introduction and we'll make that happen. Oh he'll be well he was on one of our first shows. Uh, he will be back in August. He is now traveling uh he took uh, two months to go one to Dubai and then one to Florida. Uh he's probably watching right now. I will happily give you that check, sir. Okay. All right. Nice. And <laughs> the jack. Well, I'm gonna take that anyway. anyway. <laughs> You'll become my best client. All right, love it. So I gotta you, ask: Are you into martial arts? Yes, I, I we are. Lo love the outfit. We're, thank you. We're a martial arts family. Anytime I do an interview, anytime I do um, any type of premieres, anything, it's generally this is what you'll see me in. Um, so my fam, we went to China two years ago. Um, and my kids and him, him included, he's not fluent, but he can speak Mandarin. I mean, is it Dijon? Rajon. 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 And a side note to, to the name uh, okay. for that. So my mom's name is Rachel. My grandfather's name is John. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be able to honor the both of them through cool. my first son. So that's, that's where awesome. the name came Very from. Very cool. Uh, family means a lot, man. So mm -hmm. I'm sure it's to you all Agreed. as well to say family. Yes. So I wanted to make sure I can carry on a legacy in a way. And he can tell that story to his kids, and they can tell yes. it to theirs. Um, but, oh, shoot, I lost. Oh, yeah, about the dragons. Yeah, the He dragon. was born in the year of the dragon, too. But I said, oh. um, so we don't have a lot of um, non-negotiables in my family. Say I allow the kids to have their own opinions, to express those opinions. And if they try a sport and they're not a fan of it, they can quit. But... One, we do have non-negotiables. One's financial literacy, of course, being a good person, learning languages and we tr because we travel and you want to get perspective mm -hmm. because different cultures have, I tell my kids all the time, you can't say, unless you know how, what other person, what they've been to, what they've been through, if you've walked in their shoes, mm -hmm. you have no idea what you do in a similar situation. By the way, it's impossible to walk in somebody else's shoes, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you can learn and you can become, quote, culturally aware. So if we're going to go to these different places around the world, I want you to learn about the cultures <coughs> and also try to learn a bit of the language. Mm -hmm. So um, my kids, they speak English, Spanish, Mandarin. They've been learning Japanese and Korean, French and Russian. Wow. wow. So um, 
Again, I'm, I'm well, you're setting them up to be spies. I like that. Yeah. Hey, nice. Hey, don't tell and, me. And he's got martial <laughs> arts training. Yeah. 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 Jason Bourne. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's it's very cool. and for the martial arts, that's the other non-negotiable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I had two girls, and before I had him, I wanted to, as a father, you want to make sure that your kids safe, are safe yeah. and they can take yeah. care of themselves. Oh yeah. So, I just got my four-year-old little girl into karate, yeah, and it's, it's just awesome, man. Yeah. You know, right now, four years old, watching these classes, it's like herding cats. You know, they're just all over the place. Nobody's really doing Take martial arts, but it's so good. Take pictures and videos, fun. man. I say, do because yeah. I, I watched the ones of my girls when they started at the, and it's just the, it's the cutest thing, man. Yeah, it's hey, awesome. How did you get into the uh, the martial arts? The love for martial arts. My uncle um, and Bruce Lee. There so you go. when my cool. uncle came sure. back from uh, Germany, he had all of these different videotapes of old um, Looney Tunes cartoons, Popeye cartoons, and a whole bunch of martial arts films. And he used to put together videos before um, MTV was doing videos, because uh, the first video, I don't even remember the first video, but he used to edit martial arts films to um, old 70s and 80s music to line it up to go and I still I tell him to this day man I wish you would have kept yeah. that stuff because it was really really cool and it inspired me a ton so he would teach me grappling uh, mm -hmm. that he learned from the military yep he put me in martial arts when I was a kid my dad used to teach Shotokan karate so I've learned Shotokan I've learned a bit of Krav Maga I'm a black belt in Chen Mu Kwan Taekwondo so are my kids um, I used to study this art night icon and I just you just want to be able to protect yourself and make sure that they do the same and if I'm going to have them do stuff I've got to model it beautiful I love that so I had much respect for yes. uh, martial arts back in the day when I was that uh, wannabe actor in LA uh, my roommate uh, Ricky Jeffco was awesome man and this guy was Kempo and uh, right. I didn't know anything about Kempo but he'd go do these katas for like 45 minutes an hour right. and then he goes I go, like, what are you doing today? He's like, well, I got to fight these four guys, and, uh, you know, it's my train. <coughs> Blindfold it. And I'm like, I go, come on, man, you're kidding me. And he was not kidding me. And I'll never forget that it actually came into play. One night, we were working at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion where Phantom of the Opera was, and we were waiters. I was the front waiter. Ricky was back waiter, and we loved it. But, it, you know, we made good money there. But, you know, a lot of times we didn't go out, so we, we played the game Caps with beer, which brings yeah. Jerry into the picture. <laughs> so we, ran, we ran out of beer, so we walked down to the 7-Eleven, and we grabbed a case of Budweiser, the Budweiser little eight-ounce nips and everything, and uh, then we grabbed another case, because uh, they only had the one, of, of cans, of the 12-ounce the cans, because they were on sale. And we're walking out, and all of a sudden, we're just walking down the road, and I hear somebody yelling out from across the street, and so we don't think they're talking to us, it's just me and Ricky, and... All of a sudden, and I'm hearing, hey, you, jackass, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm cutting it a little bit, and I, I know we can cuss here, but, uh, and all of a sudden, I look, at, and, and I'm still, you know, fighting days, and I'm so, I go, you talking to me? He's like, yeah, you, you jackass, and all of a sudden, there's three of them, so it's only me and Rick, and I'm like, and we've already drank a little bit, but I'm feeling bulletproof. So all of a sudden, these guys come running uh -oh. at us. And, I, and I'm bigger than Ricky, <laughs> a little bit. I'm, I'm taller and a little bigger. And so naturally, two guys come after me. And I, I remember, I popped open the Budweiser case, and I took a beer as these guys were in, and a full Budweiser, and I just fired at this guy. I missed him. It exploded on the car behind him. But next thing you know, you got three guys, two of them on me, and I see Ricky out of the corner of my eye because one guy's hitting the back of my head with punches, and I'm, the other guy, I'm trying to get him in a headlock. Next thing I see Ricky take this guy out in about five seconds, comes mm -hmm. over, and he gets these two guys up. I mean, literally takes care of all three of these guys. He says, look, Kempo's a defensive art. He goes, I don't use it. You know, he goes, but these guys, they threatened us, and then they came over. He goes, so I didn't use the actual Kempo skills that I had, but I used the other things that I've learned in martial arts. And I was... Never so happy to be with the right person. <laughs> At the right time. Uh, uh, yep. Unbelievable. And I remember it's about, about midnight and you're not expecting anything. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, something happens. Right. So I think martial arts is something that, you know, I, I think a lot of youngsters should get into it. Because Agreed. if you use it to where you're disciplined, which you are in martial arts because you learn that, mm -hmm. but you have that confidence to where you know that if you're threatened or you're attacked or if your family is that you have the capability to defend yourself yeah. i think every professional athlete or athlete in general should do some kind of martial arts as well because it's just such a great it, it teaches you balance quickness being able to throw power while being you know, remain uh 
in control and yeah. balanced. Uh, obviously, you have the the mental side of it of re- remembering you know combinations and things that you know as it's coming at you, and you have right. to think on your feet. And uh, and then of course the discipline part of it, and the and the respect part of it. Yes, and, sir. Oh man, I loved. All, I I took Muay Thai for about three or four years during. Uh, when I was playing, and I did karate when I was really young, and have always always loved martial arts. And just uh, when I started doing Muay Thai, it really helped my pitching. My uh, daughter came about this close to fighting Muay Thai. So I'd said the school that she went to, Saitan, actually, they're um, based in Chandler. And they told her, said, if you want to do this, because she was just getting so frustrated with some of the girls at her school. She said, I know I can't hit anybody, Dad. I said, but I need to go someplace, and I need to let out some steam. So... Put her in Muay Thai because she said she wanted to get in the ring and fight. And she um, was in there for about a year, year and a half. And But most of the, the reason I think why she didn't continue to go is because the gym, there were a lot of champions in there, but they were all guys. So she just kind of like, I was... Yeah, that's cool. I don't want to kick all their asses, Dad. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I will not let her hit me anymore, man. Her and her sister, they hit hard. Um, that's like, shoot. Then you've f- done your job. Yes. Yes. There you yeah. go. Yeah. I, I, exactly I feel right. seriously feel sorry for anybody that runs up, particularly on my oldest, because... Yes. She does not play. You taught her a little of that Krav Maga because I know that's the you end stuff real quick with that one. So we try to, um, when we can, work on close encounter moves. Mm-hmm. I'm always as a dad, kind of coming up behind him occasionally. And You're Kato. Say, to say, remember uh, what the, the Pink Panther, <laughs> no, green the Green, green, no, green well, it was green pretty much the same thing. Kato was the uh, was Besides, Bruce. that was Bruce. Yeah, that was Kato Bruce. Was Bruce. So he used to, uh, but the Peter Peter Sellers version, right. you know, he always had to surprise them. <laughs> did you ever, did you guys see the Pink Panther yes. version? Mm-hmm. The older ones were classic. Was this in the forties? <laughs> oh my! There it is. <laughs> oh, Cameron, Cameron's. Yeah. Well, we want to thank Cam for his last show. Um, <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but uh, you know, what, guys, remember that because he used to jump out of a closet and said that you know it's Peter Sellers, so he'd be like, you know, they're breaking everything, and then the phone would ring, and he'd go, and they would all stop, and he'd go. Hello? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you, you, yes. you know what I'm talking about, yes. right? Yeah. I have Thanks, seen somebody's little, backing me up. Yes. The guy that I didn't knows. see it in real time, but I have seen the reruns. Yeah. Tank, are you a fan of the uh, UFC now that they kind of combine the boxing with the martial arts, different martial arts? Do you watch the UFC? Oh, uh, well, actually, that's we, yes, we all as a family watch UFC. Beautiful. Even, even the kids. Um, we, whenever they're It's just on events, different couches, right? Because people are like going, whoa, you know, whoa. <laughs> You're like, that's just popcorn. All the, all the big. Big fights, but yeah, we watch them. We sometimes we break them down. And we talk about them, but yeah, that's that's, cool. that's one of the things we do in our, in my family. So yes, Nancy, you got anybody nice. uh, karate, uh, Muay Thai? Fam- Muay Thai? Do I myself? No, no, anybody in your family? Is no, your brother and no, sisters? But, no, but she's Alexa, a twin. Yeah, I'm a twin, but my daughter. They just fight actually, between each other. Uh, you what? <laughs> you just fight between we each fight. other. No, yeah. we don't. Though. No, they never fight. <laughs> but um, my daughter actually is 26, and she's out in Nashville, and she's looking at. Actually, she starts I think soon. She found a place to do Krav Maga. So, oh, and okay. I've been wanting to do it for yeah. a while. I just never have. But that's something I would totally love to You're do. You're like totally so, into the good vibe. It's kind of hard for you to go. I kind of. I'm not like the athletic type. Yeah. <laughs> With a rock. Right. There you go. No, but if you actually do, I mean, just let uh-huh. me know because okay. there's. Um, I think I was explaining this to you mm-hmm. also yesterday. A good friend of mine, his name is Joe Edmondson. Okay. He is an eight-time uh, Taekwondo world champion. Really? And he transitioned over to start tra- um, training people on Krav Maga about five years ago. Is he, he here in Yeah, AZ? he's here in, okay. here in town. Well, that would be good so. for me. My daughter's out in Nashville, if you have any one that you know there. But other, I think well, me and Cam were talking about yeah. doing, like, kickboxing together uh, yeah. just for the workout, of course. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm actually going to go check out this <laughs> uh, Kung Fu studio right Kung here Fu right, fighting. right around the, the one that's Kung right Fu next fighting. to the chinese all you could eat buffet i like it that's the I good like stuff it. right there wow. wow ken did you do any kind of uh you know i didn't i mean I, you had your buddy right there he could have probably trained you on the way home yeah you know and i remember you know uh, you some of my other beer. friends would make fun oh there's rick he's going to his do his two hour katas and do all this stuff for kempo and like but then when the chips are down, Rick Man. is the guy you want in your foxhole. Yep. Just like I'm sure Tank and, and his kids coming up. When you are with somebody like that, you are like, yeah, I got this. I don't have it, but I've got a friend that's with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this is like no, my no. bodyguard. Remember yeah. that movie? 
Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I got in my my share of fights, you know, growing up in uh, you know back in Jersey, and I wish I would have had that uh, mixed martial arts background, something mm -hmm. like that, to where I would have at least felt the confidence, but also the discipline, because that's been a problem for me throughout my life has been discipline. Mm -hmm. Uh, always lacked self-control, as uh, my dad will attest to, as far as my uh, report cards back in the day. But I uh, never Red had that, four. and I know a lot of. Yeah, I know a lot of. Uh, <laughs> I know a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, no, we were we were talking a little bit off uh, about his off camera. Yeah, third grade because uh, Rajan is right. in third grade now. Your son. Yeah. And I said my grades were great, all A's and B's, but they had the little self-control, and it was one, two, or three, three being the worst, and. I got two threes successively, and then my dad was not happy with them. Then I got a red three because they couldn't give a four. And Mrs. Stella back in Adley Stevenson School was like, this kid is just off the wall. ADD, <laughs> I mean, we invented ADD back in my day. Yeah. So everything was written in red that semester. And my dad's like, well, well, look at this. The kid has invented a new grade in the school. He should be proud of himself. Why he's out you know, doing all these chores for the next two months, you know, grounded literally. And uh, uh, by That's the time- That's creativity, brother. There it was. But by, <laughs> the, by the time the last semester came, I just got the blue three. So I was back to, my dad was okay with it. He was like, at least it's not the red three. So, I mean, but uh, I wish I did have the discipline no, it, and I appreciate that. It's kind and of, and uh, you know, I'd like to commend you and your family yeah, for that. That's it's very awesome. Cool. But you know what, there's, there's so many posts going around, like people go, do you remember this, right? Have you seen those? It's like the new meme where they show like, you know, some kid on, you know, 1970s or 80s jumping, like six kids laying on the cement and all oh, yeah. the parents are sitting yeah. on the porches and they're like, you know, do you remember this? If not, you know, you're too old, yeah. right? I remember I that, but it was so here. funny because you'd have like, you know, the parents are sitting on the, all the porches to see if he's going to make it or he's going to land on the six yeah, kid. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? They're like, <laughs> like they're, that's probably where and you were you sport out, betting coming from. It, it was You're like the, taking bets. You know, right. porch two, what do you want? Uh, 20 on that, porch three, what do we got? Third kid, third kid, fourth kid. Fourth <laughs> yeah. kid. He's, a, he's a veteran. He's going to go for six. <laughs> now we know why he was getting his ass kicked. No. <laughs> but I he will say, that, out. you know what, that, that's a good point. But a lot of the kids that I hung out with in, in Jersey growing up were older than me, like a year and a half, two years older than me. Uh, that lived around my my neighborhood. So yeah, I got I got my butt kicked. But I had an older sister that was a year and a day older than me, and she was the fastest runner, boys included, on our block. Uh -huh. And when she took my sister Val, when she took off those hard clogs, those clog sandals, yeah. she took, heard me getting beat up on by a couple of the kids in the neighborhood. My sister Val in her little Daisy Duke shorts took those clogs of running barefoot, oh chasing down two of my buddies that were older, <laughs> were hitting out. them over the head wow. with these Ooh, hardwood clogs. clogs. These kids wow. had welts, welts on their heads. <laughs> yeah. So I'll never forget those. Uh, yeah. So you think about things back in the day, yeah. you know, even automobiles, you get in an accident now, your car's done, right? Back in the day, I remember the 69 Firebird. I had that first one. <laughs> Car hit me. Nothing happened. I mean, I had a little ding. Yeah, on you're my just thunder. like this. Like I think we're all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. <laughs> things, things have definitely changed. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Things have really changed. Really changed a lot. Because even like, uh, I'm going to even say this. When I was in high school, you know, you would go to parties. You would go to people's house. Mm -hmm. They would drink. Yeah, These yeah. kids today, which is good probably, but they don't drink. They don't do anything. They just play Xbox. Yep. They're always yeah, on the games. games. Like, yep. you know, how many friends yeah, do you got? Fun. I got like yep. 300. I go, have you ever met them? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, no. Nope. You got a friend in South Korea. You got a friend in Russia. You got a friend in Jersey. You got a friend in Florida. And I'm like, every night or every day at this time, that crew gets on, right? Because, you know, they're playing like Grand mm -hmm. Theft Auto. What'd well, you all say? This. Some of them get on, but then some of them just watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're just watching huge. other people play. And then the guys oh, who are playing are making money playing while other people are right. paying to watch them play. That's crazy. Oh, wow. You gotta pay That's to why watch me and Cam play. every night at 11 are playing now. We're going to go, somebody will watch us. <laughs> somebody will well, watch I us. I tell my, my, my little brother, he was, well, my bigger little brother, he's 6'9", um, but uh, he, he's one of those guys that he watches Twitch, and okay. he, you know, he's a big gamer, plays all the League of Legends and all that stuff, and, and I'm like, dude, you're going to watch somebody play video games? That's ridiculous. I'm going to turn on the baseball game. Oh, <laughs> <you know? yeah. laughs> watch like, somebody yeah. else play a game. But that's, like, virtual. Okay. that's virtual. Yeah. That's virtual. That's, that's yeah. real. Well, that's true. but the same. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> the only reason he's doing that is because of this. He's, he's going, going hey, is this guy going to win? And now he's got Ken, so he doesn't have to watch the game, and he'll be over here. <laughs> well, I'm uh, proud to <laughs> announce my retirement. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got a uh, fallback. There you go. Now, that's right awesome. here. 
All right, so Tank Tank was the uh, was the nickname which became your middle name, right? Right. So my my nickname for the last four decades has been the Grinch, and I mean I have everything, <laughs> wristwatch, slippers, has you name it, anything Grinch, I have it. And so <laughs> technology it. wise, we figure we all know technology now, but back when I was growing up, and I'm older than probably everybody here, including Jerry, and. Uh, it came out, there was a dynamite 8-track player. Okay, so let me go back to 8-track. Yeah. So it was set up like a little TNT dynamite box, and you would put the 8-track in the side. When you pressed it down, it would change tracks. That was like big time. <laughs> so it would go to one, two, three. So my buddy comes over on Christmas night, and he shows me this blue 8-track player that he got. I go, man, that's awesome. So we go out, we're hanging out with our buds. And so he leaves it at my house. So I figured, okay, for sure, he's coming back the next day to get it, right? Doesn't come back. Two days go by, three days go by. All of a sudden, I'm like, crap, he doesn't know that he left it here. I start, all I have with this crappy AM radio, so I start borrowing all my buddies' eight tracks getting my Pink Floyd, my Jethro Tull, the Kiss, you name it, all the Led Zeppelin, all that stuff. Got it all there. Jeez, how old is he? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's Just old. Kidding. No, no, it's all right. I, Those I, are my I, I will be the big 6 0 in September, so it's, it's going fast. Yeah, it's going Whoa. fast, man, uh, this time of year. Anyway, to make it look Jack, long story do we have the short, walker out back at the park for him, right? <laughs> do we have the walker? It. Don't need it. And, and, and any of you out there that want to shoot threes for money, I'm like still there. I'm still yeah, able. Like we're going to take a quick label, commercial man. break for Jared's home. That's right. You know what? And there are people, like Satchel Page said, Okay, uh, one of the greatest pitchers of all times that made it in the major leagues at age 57, yeah. said, if you didn't know how old you are, how old would you be? 28. Okay, but 21 I mean, how from old the do you feel? Down. Jerry, oh. Jerry be 70. Number, yeah. Jerry, Jerry's 50. <laughs> there it is. 70. There it is. I can tell how good a friend we are, right? right? So I'm, I'm yeah. good with that. Anyway, let me yeah. finish this story because it's a look classic. 70, but I'm 21 from the waist down. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Those blue pills do magic. Yeah, yeah, do. <laughs> it's a full three. <laughs> So what were you saying? Okay. <laughs> so so my, my buddy, we're going to a concert, Madison Square Garden, Bad Company concert. He's older, a year and a half older, so he's driving. So he says, Kenny, I'm coming over, man. I'll get you. I'll be there in a half hour. So I'm in the shower getting ready. He gets there, and he says, hey, KT, you got a shirt I can borrow, like an old concert that, you know, shirt. He goes, my mom made me wear this button-down shirt. He goes, I can't wear this to a Bad Company concert. I go, yeah, middle drawer. Forgot that's where I hid the A-track player with all the oh. A-track. I go, no, no, you left it here, bro. I was saving it for you. He goes, saving it? You got 15 A-tracks next to it. You ain't saving shit. <laughs> he, he goes, you ain't saving shit, right? The next day I walked through high school. I walked past the offensive linemen. They're all sitting there. Big Sal Citrullo, no neck. Hey, your shit, there's the Grinch. I'm like, so I look around. There's no one. To, like, I blow it off. He's not talking about me. Then I walk at the end of the breakfast, and I'm walking by, and all my buddies, all the DBs and, and safeties and all those guys that I hung out with, oh, hey, there's the Grinch. I just, I'm like, God dang, it's Stewie, man. He told everybody. At that time, we had the, f the phone in the kitchen. My sisters would run to grab it, and they'd, senior or junior, because all my buddies' voices were changing. I was Ken Jr. It's like, senior or junior, senior or junior. After that day, there's not one person ever asked for Ken again, Ken Jr., Yo, is right. the Grinch there? Grinchy, Grincho oh, Mundo, yeah. Grinch. I mean, that was it. Huh. I mean, uh, and Matt, I've had that nickname now. It's 40, uh, 42 wow. years. Is that crazy stuff? All over an A track. The Grinch. Yeah. Over right. an A track yeah. player. That's it. So, technology now, I mean, when you look at, you know, CDs you thought was the thing, and then it come in iPods and all this well, stuff. I mean, and everything yeah. just keeps changing. It gets smaller and this and that. Who knows that's actually how happen. I got into this business. How's that? Because I got done playing pro, I got hit by a, a truck. But when I was done, um, I didn't know what to do. Like I had trained my whole life for this, this moment, right? And uh, I was sitting at the house, you know, pretty much depressed, didn't know, like trying to think of all the options. Can I go to school, I can go here, I can go there. And then somebody came up to me and said, you know the guy who takes this VHS? You, you know what VHS is, right? Mm -hmm. All right, all right, just yes. checking. And he says, <laughs> the guy who puts it on this CD-ROM is gonna be a mega millionaire. So I'm like, I got nothing but time. How much would you give me? And he goes, 25 grand. 25 grand back in like, like you know, I mean, uh, yeah. I was yeah. like, okay. So there I am with my first computer. <laughs> you know, trying to figure it out. And then a few, a few uh, uh, so I actually um, made them, made, and it was like a huge success. 
then I had to, you know, I had wires all over the house, everything. You know, we're trying to vacuum. We're like like this, and you're picking up wires. And finally, you know, wifey turns and says, why don't, why don't you get an office? And take all this crap and get out of here. <laughs> because, you know, they, you know what it's like? You go past the peas, and they go... Yeah, hold that back. Don't, don't, don't disconnect those. Don't do. It. So we'd get there, and then finally, I got this office, and I grew to 168,000 feet with CDs. I was That's making awesome. it for all these people, Germany. Then we started getting. Remember the video business cards? Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. When the internet was still really slow, it was yeah. like it was impressive like to get dialogue. like you know. You got mail. You got mail. That was AOL, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, so we used to put the whole website and their PDFs on the uh, the little business card so that they could put it in their uh, CD CD player. But that was the time when one X. So if it was an hour long, it took you an hour to burn it. Oh yeah. yeah. So like you 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 know I had like I had to keep buying computers. So at like four in the morning, I'm like, <laughs> then you hear ding, and I'd be like. I had friends oh like God. that. Like this. And then <laughs> like, I would get an order. Four in the afternoon and he's doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, he eats dinner at 3.30. So, yeah. Yeah. Early senior, bird special, senior special baby. yeah. There you go. Nice. Well, you know, That's it's right. on sale. It's next to that karate place, Chinese buffet. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it was just uh, quite impressive that... Uh, it has changed, and that's how I got my start. And then, actually, the I was sitting there on a Friday night, and we got a knock at the door. And, you know, I don't really tell people where the studios are. And I was kind of really off the beaten path, right? So I'm looking at the people in there because, you know, it was like Friday, 10 o'clock. We were having a beer just after a long day of drinking beer. Of course. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 beer. and I'm like, did anyone forget somebody? Because there's a knock at the door, and everybody, you know, you, you know, back in the day, you didn't worry about a knock, but after so many things, you start going, there's a knock at the door, you know? So I walk up there, and the guy goes, hey, are you Jerry? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking like, who, who wants to yeah? Who are you? yeah? And he's like, I uh, heard you got a lot of equipment in there. I'm like, boy, for a guy who hasn't even said his name yet, you're starting to spook me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a little spooked here. You know, uh, what's going on? So all of a sudden, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, well, I know you have like uh, 168,000 feet. I know you got editing suites. I'm like, what are you, casing me? And then he said, no, I'm a movie producer. And I go, what do you want with a CD manufacturer? And he says, I want to use your space. He goes, you got an editing, you got uh, audio recording? Because I was making like the, uh, what do you call it? Um, the voiceovers, you know, because it yeah. was more corporate videos at the time, you know? Right. Bob loves his job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bob does not like Mary, and Mary acts like this, you know? So uh, we used to do those, and uh, but he came in. So the, 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 I'll, I'll expedite the story for, for time's sake. But, but those it, that have gotten his voicemail know what he's talking about. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the yeah. – <laughs> that one just kicked in, yes. sorry. Because uh, I do voiceovers on my, uh, my uh, voicemail. Uh, voicemail. You are yeah. not a winner. Yes. yes I love that. So uh, anyways, he said uh, – I go, I kept saying to him, I, I don't want to do movies. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And then he wrote me a check and went like this. And I go, why don't like, you come yeah, on in? We're come drinking. Come on in. Let's have a drink. We're yeah. drinking. <laughs> I do then, movies. You know what that movie <laughs> was? Now I do. Just take You know what that movie was? Road to Perdition. Yay. Nice. That's so cool. That's awesome. I didn't even know what the hell it was. I was nice. like, Road to Perdition. Next no, time you, tell him leave. No, no. We're there. on Holmes. <laughs> right. Holmes Road. Yeah, right. Not, yeah. not Road to Perdition. But hey, bro, don't start telling me about all the equipment I got. Just lead with a movie producer. Here's a check. I want to use your spot. Cool, let's do that. <laughs> well, that's how it worked, and they came in, and we started working, and then I kept doing more and more movies, and I said, screw this CD business. I don't have to do it. Nice. But I, love I, had, a, I had a nickname in high school, like right. uh, a, and it was a green, happy. slender character as well, uh, but my nickname was Gumby. And nice. That was because Gumby, damn it. my first day... Uh, don't you just I was, instantly picture Gumby when you, when you just started to say this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you instantly <laughs> picture Gumby as Gumby. 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 Gumby, yep. Uh, first yeah, day of, of uh, baseball conditioning class, I was a freshman, tall, skinny. I was like 6'2", you know, I was a freshman and probably a buck 45 and uh, wore these um, green sweatpants that I had <laughs> and our colors for the high school were green, black, and white and uh, I had this Mexican kid come up to me and he goes, Orale, you look like Gombi, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody laughed and that was my nickname that was that was for four years. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'll great. see those guys that I played ball with, you know, 25 years ago, and they go, hey, Gumby. Oh, man, I haven't <laughs> that heard that, that in forever. Crazy. That's, That's cool. it. Go back to, I mean, I went back to the craziest, the 40-year reunion. 
Nice. Everyone, the Grinch, the Grinch. <laughs> That's so cool. The Grinch made it back. Yeah. Oh, really? You know, I haven't seen a lot of those people. Do you have a Grinch, a Grinch foot. jacket like I you do the Raiders? I, I actually, the last game at the Black Hole in Oakland, you will see everything is silver and black. I am in the first row. In a Grinch costume a Grinch with a Raiders co- Christmas hat on. I've got That's the video. Beautiful. I saw that. I've got the video and I'll you show you. You did do yes, that. Yes, I did that. And I have the picture with me without the mask. But he had that boy. guy with Mui Co- Mu, uh, Mu Toy with the Merma- uh No, I was with the, the gorilla, uh, Gorilla Rilla, and uh, oh, yeah. the Violator. Wayne right. Mabry, the guy with the spikes on his shoulders and the painted face. Oh, yeah, in fact, yeah. Wayne's going into the, uh, the Hall of Fans, which is sponsored by Ford, in August when Coach Tom Flores and Charles Woodson both go in. The Hall That's of Fame. Cool. How do you get into the yeah. Hall of Fame? Yeah. You just the have Hall to be fans, a legendary. You have to, you have to, and they're voted on. It's voted on by all the people across the country, and they they choose three per year. And it is just like the Hall of Fame. So and cool. yeah, and, and uh, the the top vote getter gets a truck and every. I mean, it's big oh, time. Wow. Cool. Do, you, do you have a, a a heckler or something that just uh, was like the Randy Quaid of major leagues for you? Um, okay, so my very first year of uh, pro ball, I'm in Pulaski, Virginia. And it's as glorious as it sounds. Uh, <laughs> Pulaski's wow. actually claim to fame is making furniture for the Price is Right. So that's okay. where, it, yeah. But uh, 2,600 people in this town, and the uh, general manager of our team, his son's name was Bubba, and Bubba wow. would come to our games, <laughs> and I not kidding you, he came in the overalls with no undershirt, and he came oh. to heckle us. And he would he would get on our team, tell us how horrible we were, and and it's not yeah. like the guy was like hilarious or funny. It was just like, dude, you're, this is your dad's team. You come here with no <laughs> shirt on yeah. and, and make fun of us. Well, Bubba got in trouble uh, selling moonshine out of his truck, uh, and and couldn't come what? to games anymore. So that was is this for real? One hundred percent real. Of course, that'll be, legal. Alaska, that'll be legalized now too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That's crazy. The moonshine was good. <laughs> That's, uh, that's my, my wife's family from Lexington uh, on her dad's side, and they ran Moonshine for, for years and years and years. Lexington, really? Kentucky, yep. Okay, yeah. Moonshine. Running, so running, running, up, running, running, up, running up to now? Wisconsin. They, uh, they were Just the writing everybody out right now. Is the statute yeah. of limitations? Uh, it's, it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, Bubba, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bubba's now a surgeon. You're going to have to get that bathtub out of the woods. <laughs> Still in overalls, though. <laughs> With no shirt. With no shirt. With no shirt. <laughs> He, he wasn't a good Big whistler, was he? Because he was missing a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Just my spitting on God. people. Yeah. Everybody's sitting there like this. Right. Hey, Bubba's going to speak. <laughs> Get your goggles you know, going. You, you, play, you played baseball all those years. The greatest game I ever watched was July 4th, 1985. The Mets end up beating the Atlanta Braves in 19 innings, 7 hours and 43 minutes. And I had gone back to Jersey, and they were having a barbecue, more or less for me, because I was in California for a while. And my brother-in-law comes in, and he's like, Will you get your ass out there? And I go, I go, no, it's, I'm just watching the last of the eighth. I go, and Mets get him out, I'll be right there. And Mets are up 7 nothing going to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Braves get eight runs in the bottom of the eighth inning, 8-7. Eight, the Mets tie it in the ninth, 8-8. Eight, eight. Mets get two in the tenth, Braves get two in the tenth. Comes down to the 18th inning. My brother-in-law gets up to open the post office in Princeton, New Jersey. And he goes, are you still watching ESPN highlights? Go to bed. And I go, no, no, the game's still on. He goes, get out of here. I go, I swear to God, Rick Camp. And you got to watch this YouTube for you folks out there I don't know who Rick Camp is. The Atlanta Braves had no pinch hitters left. So Rick Camp, a relief pitcher who has a lifetime average of 062 and had never hit a home run, the Mets were winning 11 to 10 in the 18th inning. This guy had to bat for himself with two outs and on an 02 pitch, John Sterling, who's the voice of the Yankees now, was calling the games for the Braves and go, "Now if Camp ever hits a home run, this will be the most bizarre game in his." And he hits a home oh, run, wow. and, to, and he's laughing. Awesome. He's laughing his ass off, <laughs> running around the bases. He turns back to the and, he, and he's just like one of these, and he fit, ties the game at eleven. Ron Darling, who's the Mets broadcaster now, who's a great pitcher, had, pitched the day before. Was a starting pitcher, had to come in and close the game in the nineteenth inning. And the greatest thing is Ted Turner on the back of the tickets, fireworks immediately following the game. 5 a.m. in Atlanta, they blew wow. off all the fireworks. They the still Mets, did it, huh? And Mets won the game so 16 to 13 in 19 innings, seven hours and 43 minutes. And I watched the. That's whole what game. I'm telling you. When you when you you like, ask him about that, that he's he's that moment in time, and you yeah. go, "What happened on 1974, July 18th?" 
two forty five. He goes, oh, that's when uh, this guy hit a home run. What are you? That is so. Give cool. me something hard. Right. I'm like nineteen forty two. He's like Babe Ruth. Uh, shit. Uh, next one. So you, you know, know Babe Ruth, but now people will know who the hell Rick Camp is. You'll look up that YouTube. Yeah. It is the most bizarre thing that you will ever see in baseball history. And I'm friends with a lot of baseball players. I had Wayne Krinsky on my show last night who was a general manager for the Reds. And Roberto Clemente Jr. is a great friend of mine. So a lot of great stories he told me as well from old Pittsburgh Pirates days back. Uh, Those old guys, man, they got the best stories. Oh, I'm telling they you. They do. They are. They are the awesome. Best. I got to sit That's down like the with, movie I, Johnny Be Good with those guys, remember? Where they're just like driving drunk, uh, yeah. taking the players out for drinking. Yeah. Okay, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I've just, <laughs> uh, I've really enjoyed, like, sitting down with, like, Bob Euchre, yep. and, you know, he's the the best with the deprecating humor, too. He's just amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, some of these guys just have outrageous stories, and it's just so fun to, to listen to them, because they're, you know, they're telling stories from a time when not everybody had a cell phone. You know, not everybody had a, a, a camera to catch you on, and some of these stories are, you know, well, my, my, yeah. thing, my thing was, I was going to say, now, day, uh, I understand with the COVID, seven inning double headers, putting a man on second to start extra innings. As an old school ball player that played for all those years, I don't like to see rules change. I understand kids want everything now and they want to change everything, but baseball, the beauty of it is there is no time. Yeah. You don't know when it's going to, so it's not for everybody. Right. If you don't want to watch and appreciate the strategy and everything that goes, don't watch that's it. Go it. play it's, something else. It's not football. It's right. not basketball. It's and that's part of what makes it beautiful. And they're they're taking little by little. They're taking these little things out. You know, yep. starting the guy on second. And I, and I get it when you know, especially when I hear uh, about a nineteen inning game. I'm like, okay, yeah, well, that's when I because when you were talking about that, I'm going, oh man, I got to get up and be at the field in six <laughs> hours. You know, when that game ends. Uh, right, right. And they don't want those super super long games. But at the same time. <laughs> You got a story. If that game was nine innings, would you have a story? You wouldn't have a story. You know? Mm. Well, well, what blows me away now is the, the salaries, the conditioning. Look, the kids have everything. They've got the, the video. They've got the, the weight programs, the nutrition. All the, I mean, back when I'm watching the guys, Cleon Jones and Tommy Agee for the Mets, they worked in Mobile as car salesmen during the offseason. Lou Brock sold flowers. I mean, people had other jobs because the money wasn't like it is. But to me... That's what made baseball just a phenomenal game. And that's why it's not no longer America's pastime as much as no. we'd like it to be. But, you know, I, I mean, football and games that go quicker or even EA sports, things like that, kids migrate to those now. And very few, unless they're hand-me-down traditionalists, really get into the game of baseball after, say, you know, teenage years. As yeah. baseball is kind of leaving the America's pastime, you know, status kind of thing, uh, it's just getting bigger and bigger worldwide. It's, right. I mean, they're put guys, and you, you can see it just in the revenues and stuff, if they're able to give away, you know, $400 million almost uh, deals to all these guys, almost every, there's almost one guy on, on every team now that has some kind of, you know, 250 to, you know, $350 million deal. Um, they're making money. You and, know, and, and they suck after they sign the contract, like Lindor for the Mets, because I'm a Mets fan. Oh, there we go. Hit, can't hit his there way with a paper bag. <laughs> yeah. There we go. 359 yeah. million. Can you get 35 hits this year, please? Good Lord. All right, there we go. Well, it is the end of the hour, guys, so I hate it. I know it goes it by goes so fast. fast. I want to do a two-hour show I didn't even week. get to talk about anything. No, <laughs> part two coming up in the next yeah, five minutes. Nice part, yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank that you again, cool. uh, guys, for coming in. Tank, Thank appreciate you, you coming in. Say hello. You. Thank you. Ken Thompson. Thank you. Nancy, as always, and my main man, Cam, right here. I uh, want to thank everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you next Friday. New crew, new people, new, new ideas, and new more yep. everything coming right here. We'll see you next week. See you guys.